Hi everyone, uh, we are going to continue our discussion on the decision tree and as we learned from the lecture yesterday, well decision tree is simply a set of if else branches. So we started from the root and then we check a condition and based on the decision we go to one side and then we keep on doing the checks and eventually at the leaf and we will receive a label and this is how we can can classify a sample, right? So today we are going to talk more about how the decision tree is built. And before we move on, uh, remember we need to create a image folder and then inside we need a decision tree folder. Okay, so if you are in the notes folder and you want to create an image, and then inside the image you create a decision tree and uh, you don't have to add those two files because later when we run the code and those two files will be added automatically okay so uh, let me go here okay so the first box is just a bunch of the code we are going to use later and uh, the second part uh, we load the iris data and we have been using iris several times and you know what it is and we only consider two features so the sepal lens and the sepal v's because later we are going to do a 2d plot uh, well we can only plot a 2d graph and that should be enough actually and then the y will be the labels and then we use the class uh, the decision tree classifier and then we build uh, a decision tree and eventually we want to visualize the decision boundary so i want to pause here uh, on this graph we have the x-axis as the petal lens and uh, the y-axis as the petal v's so the first line here so this is the first decision boundary so that is the decision on the depth equals zero so that is the first split and then this horizontal dotted line will be the second decision boundary and that is the depth one which is the second decision so uh, when we make the first decision and then uh, the class on the left and as you can see this is a, a hundred percent pure node right so after we make this decision on that decision boundary and then what we can say is on the left side and it is already a pure node and if it is already a pure node once a new sample has gone has become uh, has gone here and then we can say okay here is a label because based on all the samples when you receive here and we can say you must have this label okay so if we see the decision tree and it is like this too so the first decision we are going to make is based on the pedal length and on the pedal pedal length if it's smaller or equal to this uh, 2.45 and then uh, we will give the sample cetosa why because it is 50 zero zero so 50 on one class zero on the second class and zero on the third class so it is a hundred percent pure node right now okay and also you see the genie the genie is a zero so it seems that if you have the genie as a zero and then it is a hundred percent pure node right okay so Let's come back and the second decision will be here so this is the second decision so if you go down here the second decision will be made on the pedal v's so if the pedal v's is smaller or equal to 1.75 and then it is a green node and on the green node and the genie is 0 0.1168 okay so i would say this is also a small number and for the values you have 0 4, uh, 49 and 5 okay so this this corresponds to the green uh, the green area and if you want to do a further split the further split will be here and once you make this decision the left the left part will be classified to be blue and the right part will be classified to be green okay so it seems that this is the decision tree and on the decision tree and we see there is a genie uh well and be, as we can see it's a genie it seems that it's smaller the better because genie is a zero and then we have a 100 percent pure node and for the genie is 0 0.66 and then it is a higher number 
and in this case probably we have a good mix of different classes so this is our rough idea about the genie so what is genie so uh, before we move on let me show you this so, uh, today I uh, just see uh, this uh, plot so this is a, just a linear plot and for the x-axis it is the income in equality and uh, which is the, the Gini coefficient and for the y it is parent breathing hard work uh, well it means the x-axis is the Gini value and the or the Gini index and the Gini index uh, shows uh, economically how in uh, how what is the level of the in equality of the country and if the Gini index is large this means uh, the country is more uh, uh, the distribution of the wealth in this country is not that equally distributed so as you can see uh, China Turkey Russia and those are the countries with high Gini value so this means there are uh, a few very wealthy people and there are many many very poor people and on the on the left side you see Sweden Nor Norway and Finland and those are the countries uh, they are wealthy but uh, the, ve uh, the wealth level among the different social uh, social level of the people and they are not that different okay so well uh, is the hygiene bad personally I will say yes but is the low genie good well we can discuss about that later okay and the y-axis that is the parents breathing hard work so if a a, a kid is very hard working like uh, a kid always do all the homework and then the, the kid even wants to do extra homework by him or herself and will the parent praise that and the 90% that's really high right and 10% that's really low so it seems that in China Russia and the parents really want to encourage their kids to do extra work to be very diligent very hard working and on the Sweden Norway and Finland and we see something surprising like only 10% or 20% of parents are willing to encourage their kids to be hard working and if you draw a line there and you see uh, then in the countries where the Gini index are higher and then parents are more likely to encourage their kids to be hardworking so uh, why so why it is such a linear relationship and this is a this is a part that we can definitely discuss and we can have uh, our guesses and well there's no correct answer here uh, I have my theories and you can have your own and by the way I'm saying uh, feel free to share your ideas so uh, go ahead and tell me what's your idea on this part and I want to see your ideas before I let you know what was how I'm gonna I am reading this graph okay so well this is the genie and this is a, a, a economy term genie but this is not the genie we are talking about and today uh, the gene we are talking about the genie impurity and that is how we are oh we are coming back to the lecture okay so well the genie impurity in the decision tree is a matter of how uh, how pure or how impure a node is okay so for example if we want to take the green node and then that is the percentage of the first class square the percentage of the second class square and then the percentage of the third class square and then one minus three of those values and then the remaining value will be the Gini value so we are just just using uh, the green one as an example 
okay so there are 54 nodes and zero, uh, 0 divided by 54 that is the percentage of the first class and this is the percentage of the second class the percentage of the third class okay so this is how we can calculate the Gini value so now this is the exercise for you so calculate the Gini impurity value for the orange node so that is the node here and also uh, what is the Gini impurity of the root node so well this is here and how do you use the 50 50 and 50 to get this Gini and eventually well what what are the highest and the lowest Gini impurity possible and how can we get them so you may have to try different values or even different combinations of the values and see how you can get the highest and the lowest possible of the genie values so i'm going to pause my video here and i will see you in the next video